I got something special. If you're familiar with metal guitar at all, you already know the drill. This is a Mesa oversized rectifier cabinet with uh, Mesa's OEM 8 ohm vintage 30s in them. These cabinets are used by rock and metal people the world over. They are well known for their sound. Their sound has appeared on thousands and thousands of recordings. But this cabinet is particularly special because of the time it was made in. If you're a little bit more familiar with metal guitar, then you'll know that uh, vintage 30 speakers, such as the ones that come in this cabinet, from the years of around 2002 to 2003, are supposedly some of the best speakers that you can buy, and definitely the best of the vintage 30 range. This is all based on uh, what Adam Nolly Gitgood has said about the Vintage 30 at length in his interview that he did with Cola Keller Studio. Definitely watch that video, it's very informative. Now I happen to own a Vintage 30 speaker that was made in 2003 and it is the best sounding Vintage 30 and the best sounding guitar speaker that I have ever used. So uh, when I popped into Guitar Center and I saw this thing for a pretty reasonable price for a Mesa cabinet, um, I was like, hey, uh, can I take the back off of this and see what the date codes on the speakers are? So uh, the guy brought out a drill. Um, he let me take the back off and I looked inside and sure enough, speakers were from 2002. They are Mesa's OEM vintage 30s. Um, I did a test last year on whether or not there's a difference between voicings of Chinese made vintage 30s and UK made OEM vintage 30s. My results in hindsight were probably pretty inconclusive because I only tested two speakers. I do plan on doing a follow-up to that video at some point in which I test more speakers, but for now I just want to test out this cabinet and see if it really is the holy grail of vintage 30 tone. So I'm gonna bring it upstairs and get it going and uh, we're gonna see if the legends are true. All right, so everything's in readiness now and uh, this is gonna be a uh, Ola slash Kyle Bull segment where I just play a few riffs and uh, give my first impressions uh, upon hearing the thing in the room. Of course, I already tried this thing out in the Guitar Center, but that was at a low volume, so uh, now I'm gonna be able to play it with my own amp, my own guitar, and uh, get my best first impression that way. For microphones, I'm using a typical combination that I would usually use. Um, on one of the speakers, I've got this SM58 uh, pointed directly at the speaker and backed off to maybe four inches or so, and uh, on another speaker, I've got a cheap, sure bass drum mic uh, backed off from the speaker by about a foot and also pointed at the center of the speaker. Pretty typical settings on the amp. Uh, everything is close to noon and I'm not boosting it with anything yet. Uh, it's just going into the noise suppressor. Just because even though clean tones aren't as good of an indicator of a speaker's characteristics as a distorted tone is on account of them not having as saturated of a frequency spectrum, I'm going to play a few clean riffs to start off. Yep, it's a clean tone, all right. Let's switch over to the high gain channel.
Oh yeah, it kicks ass. Definitely kicks ass. J just from me hearing it in the room. But the true indicator of its quality is going to be when I listen to the recordings and make more recordings, because uh, I'm just hearing this in the room right now. And, uh, you know, in the room, uh, guitar cabinets kind of blend into each other, mostly because when compared to like turning the knob on an amp or something, it takes a lot longer to switch out your speakers or your cabinet and therefore you lose your frame of reference by the time you're finished. So the true indicator of this thing's quality will be when I listen to the recordings and make more recordings. So that is what I'm going to do next and I'm going to do a bunch of recordings, uh, do some isolated guitars, clean, uh, semi-clean, and full-on distorted, and I'm also going to make a full mix demo um, so that you can hear how it sounds in that context. And then I'm going to make a recording of my current speaker reference, which is my 2003 Vintage 30, which is currently the best sounding Vintage 30 I own that I know of. And I'm going to compare it to uh, the speakers in the Mesa cabinet. I'm going to see if it sounds better, as good, or worse. And who knows, maybe I'll also compare a few more of my Vintage 30s that I have lying around. So I'll do that right now. See you on the other side. I'm just going to walk you through the full mix real quick before I get on to uh, some further uh, recordings and comparisons. Just get the non-guitar stuff out of the way first. Uh, the bass is pretty usual setup for me. I've got my uh, bass group for live here uh, using the TSE BOD uh, Sansamp clone. Really dirty bass tone. The drums, as usual, are slate, mostly processed with live stock plugins.
And now on to the guitars. <laughs> Of course, it goes without saying that it sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, I do have some EQ going on. I've got a little bit taken out at around 450 hertz. 450 hertz is a very typical scoop frequency for metal guitars. It almost always clears up some lower mid-range congestion that you didn't even know you had. And if you do know you have it, then a good place to start scooping out those unwanted frequencies is 450 hertz. However, with this cabinet, it's a little bit more prominent than usual, and it's like precisely at 450 hertz where this is happening. But when I was doing my initial recordings, I was almost getting this ringing frequency, like precisely at 450 hertz. It was like the cabinet was resonating right there in that specific way. I concluded that this was probably just because I had my amp turned up too high and I was sitting too close to it when I was recording, and that resonance was just a little bit of feedback. But still, that, that is kind of noteworthy that that very specific frequency was ringing. I've got a little bit of a dip right here at around 6 kilohertz to compensate for a bit of a nasty frequency in the slight high boost that I'm doing. I almost never do high boosts on guitars, but it's immediately a testament to how smooth the speakers in this cabinet are in the top end that I can actually do a high shelf pretty easily and not have it end up like garbage. I'm just going to turn off the EQ real quick and uh, play how they sound without it. And of course, even without EQ, they still sound amazing. I'll turn the EQ back on now. Yeah, that EQ is not doing much. I wouldn't say it's like drastically changing the character of the tone or anything. It's just uh, making it sit a little bit better in the mix. Now, I'm, I'm not one to immediately bring every guitar tone that I make towards that sort of modern sit-in-the-mix ideal. Usually, I try to get things right uh, from the initial recording without having to do much EQ at all and not change the character of whatever tone I've recorded. Um, but, you know, we're, <laughs> we're working, we're literally working right now with the most generic modern metal setup imaginable. Uh, 6505 family amplifier with a Mesa oversized rectifier cabinet with vintage 30s in it. It doesn't get more generic than this, so I might as well just go full on mix ready. <laughs> Listen to how tight that low end is on the palm mutes. It's it's nuts. I feel like it's got less low end overall than my Marshall 4x12. Of course, I'm not going to know for sure until I do my comparisons in a little while. <laughs> Of course, I do have a bit of a low cut going on here, but if I turn that off, even if I turn that off... It's still really tight. Yeah, all things considered, I had to do very little to this tune to make it pretty much perfect. So, is this a good cabinet with good speakers in it? abso fucking lootly It's top-notch. But is it better than whatever I have right now? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some more recordings. I'm going to... What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put various speakers in the Mesa cabinet in the same position in the cabinet. I'm not going to change the microphone position or anything. Obviously not going to change my amp settings um, and see how other speakers sound in the Mesa cabinet 
when compared to the stock OEM Vintage 30s that come in it. Just remembered that uh, the speakers in the Mesa cabinet uh, are not connected with little clips like they are in my Marshall cabinet. They are soldered, which means that I had to desolder one of the speakers. And I don't want to have to desolder and resolder every time I do a speaker comparison in this next little bit. So I'm just going to take this single speaker out of the Mesa cabinet and put it in my Marshall and do the test that way because that'll just make it so I can swap out the speakers easier. So you'll be hearing the Marshall cabinet. <laughs> So what do I conclude? Is the 2002 Mesa cabinet with the OEM Mesa Vintage 30s in it really the holy grail of Vintage 30 tone? All of those speakers that I just showcased in the speaker comparison sounded different. Of course they sounded different, but there are a whole host of variables that come into play. You know, there's aging, like some of those speakers are much newer than others. Some of them have probably aged differently or been broken in more. And of course, manufacturing tolerances over time may have led to unintentional voicing shifts. Overall though, all of those speakers, I think they sound more similar than they sound different. They're all unmistakably part of the same speaker family. Which one was my favorite? Honestly, I still think the 2003 Vintage 30 edges out every single one of them, even the 2002 Mesa ones. I've said this before in my other speaker videos, but that 2003 one that I have is just incredibly smooth on the top end. It's got incredible bass response. It's got an incredible mid-range. Everything about that speaker is just amazing. It is the best sounding guitar speaker that I've ever used. It's really good at taming the inherent uh, fizz of my 6505's lead channel, and I can hit it real hard with a really aggressive and bright sound before it will start to become harsh or unbearable. I just throw a microphone up in front of it and bam, got a finished tone. I don't have to do anything to it. Of course, the 2002 Mesa speakers are still amazing. I also pretty much don't have to do anything to those if I wanted to get a finished tone that was mix ready right off the bat. Their mid-range and low frequency characteristics are very similar, but the 2002 Mesa speakers got a little bit extra up there in that uh, 5 to 6k region. If you like bright guitar tones, you might say that the Mesa one sounds brighter and more aggressive and that you like it more. Or if you're me and you like darker guitar tones, you might say that the Mesa one is too harsh up there. Yeah, it's brighter, but it's not bright in a really nasty and spiky and offensive way like my Marshall Vintage speakers are that came in my Marshall 4x12. But I, I think it's tastefully bright. Like, there's really not any nasty spikes or excesses. It's, it's a good speaker. That 2002 Mesa OEM speaker is just a, an all-around solid speaker. It's, it's excellent. You might even go so far as to consider it top of the class. All of those speakers that I showcased in that little comparison clip were solid. Some of them were, you know, spikier than others. Some of them had a little bit different of a mid-range character, but all of them definitely were usable. All of them could be shaped into a mix-ready tone with relative ease. Some of them you just might have to work a little harder on them to get there. So with the information I have now, I don't really think I can say whether or not 2002 or 2003 Vintage 30s are really the holy grail of Vintage 30 tone, but I can tell you that the ones that I have right now are excellent, and 
they beat the ones from more modern times that I have. So maybe if you're shopping for a used vintage 30s or a used vintage 30 cabinet, don't be so focused on chasing those specific two years. Just get something that's older and try it out and chances are it's going to sound just fine. Nolly seems to have already made his conclusion that that era of speakers is the best out of all of them. And the evidence that I have collected on my own with the speakers that I have up until this point corroborates that. But again, there are too many variables at play. Um, I haven't tested enough. So I'm just going to say for now that the Vintage 30 speakers I have right now from the early 2000s are excellent. And if you get some older Vintage 30 speakers, they'll probably be excellent too. That's about all I have to say. If you liked the video, if you found it informative, leave a comment, tell me what you think, tell me about your Vintage 30 experience. Um, if you really like what you see, like the video, share it around, subscribe to the channel. Um, I don't have an upload schedule. I do these videos whenever I feel like it, whenever I have some interesting recording thing that I've come across to share. But I still would really appreciate it if you subscribed and all that. Till next time, everybody. Diamond out.